Hey, welcome back to our study this week. We are looking at Genesis 49. Today we're in 1 through 4. We're taking a look at Reuben here in the prophecy of Jacob. And before we look at Reuben specifically, we want to look at the phrase, what's to come or the last days. Let's take a look at that. So before we look at Reuben, we need to stop and think about what Jacob says as he gathers his sons together. Now Jacob is about to prophesy what would happen to them. In the ESV, which is the translation I use most often, it says that I may tell you what shall happen to you in days to come. Literally, in, in the Hebrew, it says in the last, the last days. Now, this phrase, Moses, uh, this phrase from Moses appears two other times in his writings, in Numbers 24 and Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 33. In Numbers, we have an oracle of Balaam, of all people, who says, Come, I will let you know what this people will do to you, to your people, in the latter days. Now, that's how it's translated in ESV. It says the latter days, the last days. In Deuteronomy, uh, Moses, before he dies, says, I know that after my death, you will surely act corrupt corruptly and turn aside from the way that I have commanded you. And in the days to come... In the days to come, that's that phrase, the days to come, evil will befall you because he will do what is evil in the sight of the Lord, provoking him to anger through the work of your hands. So that's the, the phrase again, the last days. All three of these usages are prophecies of the future. All three mention that evil, uh, that evil that the people will do. But all three also mention the deliverance of God's people by a king, that there would be a king coming in the last days. So that's pretty interesting that all of those are all tied together. So whenever it's used in other places here, besides this in Genesis, it always talks about the evil of the people and it talks about there would be a king, specifically a king that would come. So when we get to Judah here, we see that this king will come from the tribe of Judah. Very, very interesting. You kind of see how this is all tied together into the New Testament. Now, the prophecy, we're going to get to the prophecy regarding, regarding Reuben here. It's kind of summed up in the one phrase, you shall not have preeminence. Now, Reuben was the firstborn and therefore was preeminent. Uh, it says he was preeminent in dignity and preeminent in power amongst the other sons. But his unstableness led to the loss of his birthright and position in the family. Remember back when we uh, studied Genesis chapter 35, we had those two sentences there that uh, we said we would come back to, and that would come back to bite Reuben one day. And the two sentences were, while Israel lived in the land, Reuben went and lay with Bilhah, his father's concubine, and Israel heard of it. So this act of sin against his father changed the whole course of the history of his family, right? That one act of sin really brought about all kinds of issues, and it would affect the trajectory of the... Uh, entire nation of Israel, which is very, very interesting. Um, you know, if we think that one sin is not going to impact anything, all we have to do is look at Reuben. <laughs> he's, he's case in point right there. Don't need to go any further. Reuben is the perfect example. So, But if Reuben is not the firstborn, right? I mean, technically he is, but if he doesn't have that legal status, then who is? Well, in First Chronicles 5, 5, 1 through 2, it tells us, the sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, for he was the firstborn, but because he defiled his father's couch, his birthright was given to the sons of Joseph, the son of Israel, so that he could not be enrolled as the oldest son. Though Judah became strong among his brothers, and a chief came from him, yet the birthright belonged to Joseph. So, as we saw in the last chapter, the sons of Joseph whom Jacob adopted as his own, would be the firstborn, with Ephraim really taking the lead out of both of them. So, I want you to take notice of the fact that First Chronicles here says that a chief came from Judah. And hold on to that. Hold on to that thought until we get to the prophecy concerning Judah, because it's important. It's important that even in First Chronicles, many, many years later after this prophecy was given, there was still an additional idea here that there was a chief that came from Judah. And it, that, I think, is also foreshadowing of the ultimate chief that would come from the tribe of Judah. 
So come back next time and we'll look at verses 5 through 7 and we'll look at the brothers Simeon and Levi.